practice, the way that I felt like it had really, really worked for me to be able to overcome that problem is first to shape your sales process and by default your CRM to take into consideration this new mentality that your sales team should also be gathering that data. Um, and this means that whenever you're training your team, make sure that you're also training them how to identify those important pieces of information that they might gather. Whenever you have a customer speaking about a competitor, you should pay attention to that. Then make sure there is a space in the CRM, a field, for example, that you can use to insert that information or how to train them, how to perceive, you know, if uh, a lead says something that could lead you to think that there is a new trend in the market, try to pursue that and use that not only to build rapport and close the deal, but keep in mind that this information could be crucial for what the marketing team is doing or for the roadmap that the product team is taking care of. Um, and also make sure that whenever you're, you're building the process, you take those steps into consideration alongside your revenue generating goal, right? And that experience taught me that 90% of the times you won't need to hire a third party research agency uh, to gather the data that most of the times you have it in house. Um, for example, I've seen many companies hiring third party agencies to do a competitor landscape or to really go into the market to see how are their product being perceived or what are the new market trends that are out there. And if you really build the right processes in the right rituals with your sales team, you, you can have most of that information available to you at home. It doesn't mean that you won't need to deep dive and maybe hire a third party person or involve your product marketing team to start developing all those ideas that the sales team were able to catch because sometimes they're able to catch information that could be a little bit basic and not really what you're looking for. So you have to dig deeper, but it saves you, saves you a lot of time and also allows you to build a better relationship with your peers on product and marketing because you're able to supply them with important information, data that they're, they're going to use to improve their own operations as well. So I think the key takeaway in a, in a, in a nutshell is that don't, don't underestimate how much your sales team actually knows about your industry and how much information, how much data they have access to on a daily basis. And most of all, make sure you have the right processes and platforms in place to make the most out of those uh, out of that data. And that's what I had for you guys today. I would love to answer some questions and you know have some discussions around that topic. For sure. Thank you, Nicholas. That was awesome. Uh, the uh, the the idea about that ninety percent of your uh, uh, people that are uh, looking to get outside agencies or or research done um, don't need to because that data is there. I think is super important. How many companies uh, have I been a part of so far that are using you know uh, conversational intelligence tools like a gong or a fireflies or a chorus yeah. uh, that are using a lot of other um, you know data enrichment tools that can provide the market uh, you know research uh, just the firmographics the demographics of who you're talking to all that stuff is is there and we're all subscribing to them lately so what are some of the strategies that you guys use to really capitalize on those tools? that a lot of us are using, but maybe something like that has with the rest of the company. And that awareness usually leads them to use the tools on the right way or really understand them differently and make sure that the information they are having access to really has a meaning behind that. Um, and this is one of the most simple things that you can do, but it really changes because the tool is still gonna, still gonna be there. You're still gonna use it the way that you think you should use. But if you change the mentality behind it, uh, and the perspective behind who's using that specific solution that really helps you get there. Yeah. And something that really, really helped me along the way is making sure you have the right rituals in place. So you, let's say you have a, you know, a pipe review every week with all your all of your account executives. And usually on a pipe sync, you go over all the deals on the pipeline, what's working, what's not working, what can we do differently, when is this deal closing to get a forecast. But if you start changing a little bit the questions and besides asking the questions about when is this deal going to be closed? Is, you know, what did you learn this week about our industry that you didn't know? Or have you heard something interesting or unusual uh, this week that you felt like, you know, this is something I would like to share? And the leadership also has, has a role to play on making sure that the team is having the right incentives to, to be able to catch on those ideas on, on, on that data that it's being passed on. And then by default, they can use the solutions they have available, the tools to, 
to do what they have to do. Yeah, I think the ritual thing is such a key piece here. I, you know, if if we're using, uh, we use a a, call, a conversation, uh, you know, intelligence tool, right? And I think a lot of reps look at that as, uh, they're they're listening into my calls. They're trying to yeah. catch me, right? But the truth is, is, there's lots of functionality to catch keywords, right? And and certain things like like that through the conversation that can be used as this piece of uh, you know of intelligence for furthering your market research. So I think having those rituals as part of your your sales syncs and using hey you know I, yes we listened into this call but we were able to pull out these really positive comments from your buyers i think that helps the mentality of the rep as well to en- engender some trust in it right and not that it's used yeah. as a way to catch them when they're doing bad things but <laughs> as a way to help the the business you know grow and expand and i think empowering them to feel like they're a part of that man makes you makes them buy in that much more yeah. don't, you, don't you think yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And if I could add to that mentality is that not only you can use all those selling points, we're talking to your sales teams about it, but in a world where you're, you know, the sales teams are more and more selling more complex solutions. And we really, really talk a lot about thought leadership and, you know, every sales professional has to be really specialized in what they do and really understand their business and their industry. If you really taught them how to be able to you know identify that specific data or dig for that specific specific information whenever they're having a sales call it really helps them set themselves as specialists so whenever they go to the next call on the day and they had an amazing discussion with their leads about you know the industry they learn about the competitive landscape or they learn about some specific trend that they didn't know if they use that information on the next call not only they're going to be more successful but also they will start building a reputation in the market so you're not just seeing the industry moving and seeing it from far away, not really interfering. You're really actually being a part of what's going on. For and sure. and that's, I think, one of the best selling points. If, as you said, there's, you know, some people that are still, okay, I, I, it's really weird to, you know, to have a tool listening and keeping notes of everything that I'm saying, not only for the sales enablement piece, but also for you to be able to use that information to establish yourself as a, spe- as a specialist. Yeah, having a, having a team full of market experts would be ideal, right? I think the dirty secret is most of us don't hire a whole bunch of reps that already know everything about the market that we're selling into. And so being able to use these tools to help educate your own reps and give them those little insights that helps build trust with their prospects uh, is huge. So I think that this is a really good strategy to start thinking about with our teams. Uh, we're coming up on the end of our time. So Nicholas, I thank you. This was an awesome topic. Uh, if anybody has uh, questions or thoughts, feel free to drop them in the comments. We'll make sure Nicholas gets them. Uh, and you can always go back and listen uh, into the, the, the presentation afterwards. Uh, once again, awesome. thank you, Nicholas. Appreciate your time. Thank you, Joe. Bye-bye, guys. 